One of the big frustrations for podcasters has always been not knowing how many people follow or subscribe to their show. Finally, that's about to change. And now, a look at this week in podcasting news. It's the Jag Show Podcast. James Cridlin broke this in pod news this morning. That would be Tuesday. Next month, Apple's going to add follower counts to your Apple Podcast Connect dashboard on the back side. Now, remember, podcasting switched from the term subscribers, which implies something costs money, to followers recently. So following is the correct term. Some may say subscribers, but you should say followers because we're talking about for free. Previously, you had to guess at your number of followers based on how many downloads when you first released an episode. This is going to be extremely helpful to podcasters who want to know how many people are actively following their show. Spotify already does this on their podcasting dashboard. So now you'll be able to take the Apple number and the Spotify number come April, combine them, and really know how many followers you have across the two biggest platforms in the world. Hopefully that means the smaller uh, platforms are going to follow suit and maybe, just maybe down the road, your podcast host, whether that's Blueberry, Libsyn, Simplecast, whoever, uh, Buzzsprout, whoever it may be, hopefully that means they'll be able to take all those numbers and give you an aggregate count at some point down the road. Now, my other main topic today is when to leave the ums in a podcast. Now, of course, there are always uh, two extreme uh, versions of this. There's the people who say, just hit record and release whatever you want. There are people who say, take out every um and make it as tight as possible. Now, obviously, most people fall somewhere in the middle. Yesterday, I had a client who interviewed a woman from Ukraine who had fled to Germany as a refugee. This podcast was very heavy, very powerful, and the refugee's first language was, of course, not English. So she had a lot of ums and uhs as she tried to find the right words in English to communicate what she was feeling and what she was experiencing. And she actually had Google Translate open on her computer. So there were a couple moments where she actually typed into Google what she was trying to say so she could find the English word for it. Now, my client very smartly told me, don't take out any of that typing, searching for the right word. It's important for context. And she was right. So what I had to do when I edited that podcast was I really had to find a happy medium between leaving the ums in for context and taking them out to make it an easier listening experience. And I tried to split the difference as best I could. And I guarantee if you had 100 podcast editors, they wouldn't have made the same exact cuts that I did. It really is based on feel. It really is based on context in each individual situation. Uh, Beyond a non-English speaker, if you have an interview that you're editing and your guest says, huh, let me think about that. That's a really good question. Um, You'll want to leave that in for context because there's insight and there's thought there. But if somebody, um, you know, um, uses um as um, every um, word in their sentence, you'll want to take some of those or most of those out because you want it to be a pleasurable experience for the listener. You don't want to bog them down with time. Now, this isn't a golden rule. It's just what I found based on from doing this for five years. Generally speaking, I end up cutting about 10% of a podcast out for seeing false starts, filler words, what we call disfluencies, um, ah, uh, like, you know. On average, just an average, a 60-minute podcast ends up being about 54 minutes when I'm done with it. A 30-minute podcast ends up being about 27 minutes. I take about 10% of it out. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about whether or not to delete the ums in a podcast. It's important to leave some of them in. Another great article linked in today's show notes, Six Reasons Why You and Your Business Need to Leverage Podcasts. It's from Entrepreneur. And those reasons are your ideal clients are listening to podcasts, audio content is convenient for the consumer, podcasts attract high quality customers and clients, it doesn't cost much to get started, position yourself as an authority in your industry, and of course, it's fun. Great article linked in today's show notes. According to Pod News, only 1% of podcasts have transcripts available as of 2021. This needs to change in terms of accessibility. And podcast hosts, again, Libsyn, Simplecast, Buzzsprout, Blueberry, etc., need to make it easier. Most have a place that will allow you to add a transcription. So if your listeners are consuming your podcast on the web, they can read it. But these uh, transcriptions don't necessarily display in Apple or Spotify or the podcast apps. So I'm hoping the hosts make it easier to uh, have a, dis- uh, have a transcription easy- more easily accessible for your listeners. And finally today, BetterHelp, still the number one podcast advertiser across all platforms. 
They spent $7.2 million on podcast advertising in January. That went up to $7.8 million in February. What does that tell you? In this crazy, crazy world, we need to take care of our mental health. Until next time, stay healthy, physically and mentally, and stay safe. Later. Thanks for listening to the JAG Show podcast. For help with your podcast, find JAG on the web at jagindetroit.com.